Welcome to 1320 Stories, a new video series we're coming out with to highlight the stories behind the racers and the people we meet along the way with 1320 Video. We're kicking this off with my story. I'm Kyle Loftus, owner of 1320 Video, and this is how I started 1320 Video. So rewinding back to before I started 1320 Video, a few years before, I was in high school, like 98, 99, uh, I got really big into car stereos, and I got my first car, which my, was my dad's car, a 95 Neon, and uh, bought all this stereo equipment for it right when I got my driver's license, actually before, uh, and started going to car stereo competitions. So I got really big into car stereo competitions. I was traveling around the Midwest and I started taking pictures and I think I got that photo bug from my grandpa. He's a town photographer in city, Nebraska. And I started with a point and shoot. I, I don't know if this is the one, it was something a lot like this and it shot pretty good photos and really pretty horrible videos. But back in 2000, when I was uh, about to graduate high school, it was pretty good. Um, there really wasn't any way to post them online. There wasn't any social media or anything like that. So I would sell CDs from the previous events at the next event to pay for gas to get to those events. So it was like five or 10 bucks for a CD with all the pictures and videos from the event on it. Uh, and <laughs> I would do that for a couple of years. Uh, but my dream job back in high school was to work at Stereo West. So right before I graduated high school, I got a job at Best Buy because that was going to be my foot in the door to get in Stereo West because they needed some sort of experience. It was the best stereo shop in the Midwest. Me and my dad built a big wall behind the seats in my Dodge Neon that I bought from him. <laughs> 20, I think it was like 15 cubic feet wall behind with 415s in it and uh, I had broke something on the car and I just moved into the dorms at UNO and so I took the car to Stereo West and I had to borrow a tool and it was snowing so they let me pull it inside and they looked at it and they're like, this is sweet, like, did you do this yourself? I'm like, most of it, yeah, me and my dad did it. It's like, well, you want a job here and that was how I got the job at Stereo West. <laughs> so I got my dream job in uh, 2000, my freshman, freshman year of college uh, and that was just kind of my just kind of getting into cars more and more. Um, and the natural progression from car stereos after you kind of get sick of that is getting into race cars. That's kind of what everyone was doing was they do the car stereo competitions and then get into uh, street racing or drag racing. Um, back in like 2001, one of my coworkers took me to my first street race. There was probably 150, 200 cars. This was shortly after the first Fast and the Furious came out, I think. And Nothing happened, but the police helicopter came out and like six cruisers all came at the same time, the lights going, sirens, and I was just hooked. Like we weren't street racing, we were just hanging out in a parking lot, but I was just like, this is crazy. I, I started taking pictures and videos at the street races uh, and posting them on a, a local message board, Nebraska Street Scene or Omaha Racing, or it, was, it would have been Omaha Racing at the time. Uh, and people really enjoyed them there. So I started finding other message boards that had to do with fast cars. Uh, like there, a lot of them were just niche for certain cars like SVT Performance. There was one in Fuel Slut in Florida. There was uh, LS1 Tech that was a pretty big one. It was a lot of different like niche types of cars that you could post videos of. So anytime I have a car of that type, I'd post it in those message boards. It's the only way to do any marketing or any sort of like social media at the time was with, with that. So after filming a bunch of street races, eventually I went to the track. Uh, we went to Scribner here in Nebraska. That track was around for a few years before it closed down. <clears throat> um, I filmed a little bit there. I filmed a little bit at KCIR down in Kansas City. That's also gone now. Uh, and my friends recognized that like I had a, some sort of talent and I was shooting on this really crappy point and shoot camera. And so they actually had an idea of putting together a fundraiser. So we had a car wash and we raised like $450 for uh, half of it went to Red Cross and half of it went to buying my camera. And I got my first actual video camera that records to uh, tapes. So for the first, I don't know, five or six years of 1320 video recording to tapes, and I have uh, probably about five or 600 mini DV tapes like this. And so yeah, this is what, we, this is what I shot on for a couple of years. And the reason I liked <clears throat> these little point and shoot cameras is because I could, take photos with one hand and shoot video with the other because I was doing the solo for a few years. Um, and so I like to be able to do both. Back then, there was no place to host street racing video or any sort of videos, really. I, I actually hosted it. Originally, I hosted it um, on the dorms servers at UNO. I was in the, in the dorms for like a year or two. 
And then after that, I knew one of the guys that lived in the dorms that was a server admin. So he had a server set up with the 1320 video. It wasn't 1320 video at the time. It was Heidi Ho Productions. Um, my logo was uh, Mr. Hanky because that was my name was Heidi Ho at Stereo West. Every time I walk in, they go Heidi Ho. So I thought it'd be funny to have Heidi Ho Productions because that was my nickname, but it was a little Christmas poo as, uh, <laughs> as my logo, and that wasn't going to fly. Uh, so somewhere around like 2002, 2003, I think it was early 2003, is when 1320 Video actually became a company. Um, like spring of 2003, it had a, a post on Nebraska Street scene asking what I should call my company. There's all sorts of different names for it. But my friend had posted up, uh, Parker, I forget his last name, uh, sort of a B, I think, but Parker posted up 1320 video, and I scratched in my head, and I asked him where he came up with that, and he said it's the amount of feet in a quarter mile. And I didn't know that, and most people are, most other people don't know that, uh, but when you get a time slip, it has it on there. So 1320 video was the name that we went with. I forget, I wish I would have known some of the other ones that are out there, but uh, that one stuck. And... It was one of the, it was only 1320 anything back then. Now there's tons of them out there. My first viral video was actually on the streets um, and I filmed it. Actually, my friend filmed it, Corey Pikett, who I started 1320 video with. He was my coworker at Stereo West. We would film street, street racing videos on the weekend. Edit the, I'd edit the videos up. We'd post them. Everyone would talk shit on Nebraska street scenes. We'd be working at Stereo West, like trolling people on the internet on this message board. Uh, and that was just our fun hobby was filming street racing, putting online and seeing what happened on message boards. And uh, there was one weekend where we had the first viral video and I don't think I was even at the street race filming it, but uh, Corey was there. There was a girl that flash started the race. It was a Z06 that was stock. I think it was the guy's dad's car. He wanted to race for money, so my friend went to the ATM. We have it on video. On the, uh, it's, it's called uh, WX vs. Uh, Z06 for $500 on our YouTube, if you look it up. Um, and this is before YouTube. So the, the race happened. The Z06 lost, as it should. It was like, I don't know, 50 to 80 horsepower lower than this WX. And the guy wouldn't pay up. So we got in a fight, arguing back and forth, and then the guy called the cops while we were sitting in this parking lot, and the cops showed up with like drug dogs, and they were like sniffing all the cars and scratching up all the cars, and it was this big mess. So we posted that um, back when all my videos were hosted on the UNO dorm server, and it, it crashed the internet server. So I had, that was the point where I had to move my server. So I moved it to uh, the server that was owned by, uh, the guy went by Parrish. He was one of the first guys that I, I did like a bunch of different videos that got a lot of traction. And he had this server, I forget where it was at, but I hosted in there for a little bit. That got overloaded pretty good. So I had to buy my own server and was paying like $200 a month for server space, which is pretty expensive back then when I'm in college, not really able to afford a whole lot but had to do it to keep the website running. So right around that same time, uh, Corey pushed me into making my first DVD. And I think it was about 2003, 2004, where I had the first Street Racing Volume 1 DVD from 1320 video. That was how I was making money at the time to pay for the server bill to keep doing this and to keep traveling and going to different, different races and stuff like that. Uh, it graduated from uh, pictures and photos or pictures and videos from stereo competitions to street racing stuff. I was had like three or four DVDs at the time that I was selling, and the only way to get people to look at the DVDs was to film free videos and send them to my website, and then right next to that video is embedded on the website, well, there was an ad for the, the DVD I just released. Um, so I was worried that if I transferred my videos to YouTube, then people wouldn't buy my DVDs, and that's how I really made money. And at the time, 2006 or seven, there was no way to make money off of YouTube videos. And then right around that same time, I started working at PayPal. I went from Stereo West to PayPal right after I graduated. And I, I told my boss right away, because I was worried about him seeing the videos online. I was like, just so you know, on the weekends I film street racing videos. Just want to put that out there. And they were cool with that. Every boss I had at PayPal, I told them that, just so they knew. <laughs> PayPal helped me build my business and learn things about e-commerce that I didn't know to build 1320 video while I'm doing it as a business for other companies, it was a perfect pairing. And I would, I would 
be driving to a race on Friday, working in the car uh, for the first six to eight hours of the day, and then film a race on the weekend and then work on the car on the way back on Monday while I was working at PayPal. So it was like a perfect job to be able to build the business while I'm doing this. Cause there really wasn't much money to be had with what I was doing. Uh, shortly after I started at PayPal, I remember uh, someone asked me to buy one of my t-shirts cause I made t-shirts for myself and my friends, but I didn't make any to sell. And it was a really weird concept to have my logo for my company on a shirt and have someone else want to buy it at the time. And I had no idea. So I, I printed a few more and those sold instantly. I, I had a hard time finding somewhere to print like 40 of them in town because they all wanted to print like 140 minimum. Uh, but once I printed those, they were sold within a week or two. So it, was, it just kind of started building from there. I just had one t-shirt and a, a DVD or two at the time. Actually, I guess we had about three DVDs, but people wanted my merchandise. So I made shirts and I made stickers. It was very simple for first few years. So back in the 2006, 2007 timeframe, um, I started going to a lot more races and needing a lot more people to help out and certain people weren't available at certain times. So I had like this network of photographers I would pull in uh, to help me. And it was mainly people that I had helped train, but they just, they just liked cars and they wanted to go hang out and film race cars. So it was perfect. And so there was like Kyle Workman, Drew Davis, I'm trying to think of other photographers that helped out back then. There was probably about six or seven in Omaha that I could pull from. Back in 2008, th this is one of the pivotal moments that for 1320 video, there was the street race I heard about in St. Louis, a guy named Mongoose at the time on the St. Louis message board, one of the message boards I posted on all my guerrilla marketing. He messaged me and said, hey, we're gonna have a street race for $1,000 a car. 12 cars in St. Louis. I was like, I've never filmed anything for money. It's just been fun runs on O Street or in Omaha at the airport or wherever. So I was like, okay, so me and Kyle hopped in my car, <clears throat> went down to St. Louis, no idea what we were doing. Like this is the first big street race we've ever been to. But the people that were there were, were pretty crazy. I remember Big Chief was there. I think Murder Nova was there. Limpy was there. He was flagging the race. Monza was there. Boosted GT was there. Uh, and this is the first time I'm meeting any of them. Whole bunch of different street racers all in this one spot. And it was one of the worst street races I've ever been to. We sat in a parking lot at like 10 or 11 o'clock. Everyone got their money together eventually. Um, and then we went down to the first spot, it got busted right away. Went to the second spot, it got busted right away. Third spot busted, fourth spot. Uh, I forget who the first race was, but the second race was uh, a Monza versus somebody was the first race. Back when Monza had a Monza, a little red Monza. And then Boosted GT ran a guy named, that had a car named uh, Gold Dust. It was a brown uh, Cuda, an old Cuda with nitrous. It was a pretty crazy race. Boosted GT blew a transmission line and it was literally just like skating on ice back and forth, back and forth, popped a tire on a curb, uh, went off in the grass on the other side. We went down to see if he was all right. And as we were down there, <clears throat> the cop showed up. So I went and hid my video camera and tapes under a tree and then we left and then uh, went back after the cop. We like, hung out waiting for the cops to leave and then eventually went back and got our camera. And that was it. It was like four in the morning and we split up the money between the like 10 racers that were left out of the 12. So everyone, make, like, everyone made like 200 extra bucks or something like that. Uh, it was pretty much the worst street race I've ever been to, maybe the worst, but there were a lot of things that came from that. I met a lot of people and I had no idea what was gonna come from that. Right after that race, Limpy called me and invited me to come down to film their cash days, the Oklahoma versus Texas guys, where every other race would go to Texas, Oklahoma, back and forth. And they were anywhere from like eight to 16 racers. And it was the best street racing ever. Like these serious cars, three to $400 buy-in per person. Was, I'd never filmed a race that was like a buy-in and a bracket race on the streets, kind of like the track. And that was the first time I filmed that. And then sometime further down the road, uh, Hey Yo Steve called me. Also that was at that race and invited me to come to COTS. It was the second COTS. I wasn't the first one, uh, but we're pulling in and I'm looking at the weather. It's like 40 degrees and they'd scrape the track. I'm like, there's no way anyone's going to hook here. And then uh, Plumber Kevin was the first pair down the track and did a wheelie for like 200 feet at 40, on 40 degree weather, no prep. 
It was the first no prep race I ever filmed. One of the first no prep, prep races ever before it was called no prep. Um, and so that there were some other things that stemmed from that race, but that really just blew up my network of things I could do and people I knew uh, filming the Street Outlaws before they were Street Outlaws was a huge thing uh, for us. And it was like I had DVDs from from Cots, I had DVDs from King, uh, from the Cash Days, uh, and those were all amazing races. Then shortly after that, like 2008, 2009, my friend Josh kept coming back from Texas every spring telling me about the super race that he went to, TX2K. And I, the way he was describing the street racing just sounded like a fairy tale. You literally go out for hours and you just race, 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 race. And I had never really filmed roll racing before. And uh, when, like when we did it here, it was only just a couple of races, but the way he was describing it was just amazing. So he connected me with Peter, Peter Block at TX2K. We had a phone call with him and Dusty to see if I could be the next TX2K DVD person. I was like, I want to sell the DVDs on my website. I know you guys sell them on MVP Motorsports, but I want to be able to sell them on mine too, because I'm not just going to make this for you and move on. And he's like, oh, well, that's not going to work out. So 2009 didn't happen. And then 2010 rolls around and Peter hits me up and I was like, I, I can talk to you guys about this, but I just want to remind you, I want to be able to sell it on my website. And so we got on the call anyway and Dusty from MVP Motorsports was like, well, I, I don't see a reason why we can't both sell it. And so then that was our first year at TX2K. And so I enlisted him the help of my friend Andrew Quirk and I don't think he had ever filmed anything for me. Uh, but we had no idea what we were in for. <laughs> Went down to TX2K and that was just as amazing as my friend Josh told me about. Like the street racing was crazy uh, and for like it just kept getting crazier and crazier for the first four years. Like literally meet up at the Omni Hotel, find a group of like 40 cars all about the same horsepower and go out for an hour and race, 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 race the whole time, come back, do it again over and over again. Um, that's when I met Jared Holt, actually, was 2010. Uh, <laughs> in 2010, I didn't know anybody there. My friend Andrew was way more social than I was, so he got talked my way, talked my way into filming in Stacey Barnett's Yellow Viper on the street there. It was like 1,100 horsepower. And Stacey's one of the nicest people ever, like, still to, to this date. Uh, so he was all about it. He's like, yeah, you can hop in my car, I don't care. And so that was my first roll race, was an 1,100 horsepower Viper. And then we got back to the hotel and I didn't know anybody and Jared Holt was there and he's like, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you to some people. And he, he helped me out and got me on a whole bunch of different rides. I remember he got in a fight with one of his friends cause they were shooting video themselves too. And he's like, why are you helping this guy out? It's like this, Kyle's cool. He's shooting the official DVD, it's fine. Um, and it was a great year. Like there was so much stuff that happened that year. And as you know, the rest is history. We've been shooting TX2K for 12 years now and like it's we're the official event videographer company we've had up to 22 people work in that event between merchandise and photo and video um it's just blown up from my friend andrew and i going down to what it is today <laughs> it's it's pretty insane so as things have grown uh obviously social media is a thing that started back in like 20 like myspace was kind of big up until like 2012 well 2010 ish is when i started posting on facebook and I was just posting my stuff on my personal page before their business pages. And I could tell that people were kind of getting annoyed with all these car posts on my page. So I started a 1320 video business page around 2010, 2009. So I separated my personal life with my business life and started posting all the stuff just there as a hobby on, while I was working at PayPal. And I would like put, find memes or make memes. And that was my, my hobby was just seeing how many interactions, comments, likes, I could get on the social media, I would just sit at work. While I was doing my work, I'd make these memes and post them online and see if I could make them viral. And it was my favorite pastime back, back then. It was just me just posting on Facebook. I went from like 5,000 likes about a year in to like 10,000 likes another six months later, um, 20,000 likes you know, another three months later, just kept get, coming faster and faster and faster. And then we were getting close to 100,000 likes on Facebook, and this is a huge milestone for me. We were on Drag Week doing our live coverage in 2012, and we were at Bowling Green, Kentucky. I was up in the tower because it was the only place that had cell phone service because I was at like 99,500 and some likes. And so I refreshed it. I knew I had a few hundred more likes to go, filmed some more. An hour later, I went and looked, and it was like 99,850, and it was going way up for some reason. I was like, maybe people are excited. 
that were almost 200,000 and then it literally like a few minutes later hit 100,000 and I was like that happened really fast and the next day we were 102,000 the next day we were 110,000 and the next day we were at like 130,000 I'm like did we break something and I I had no idea what happened we, we literally hit 200,000 likes I think a month and a half later we doubled in size in a month month and a half something like that uh, and it just kept growing from there it was just like this exponential thing um, and I found out later that Facebook actually chose a group of like 30 or 40 pages to do that to just to see what happens and it literally blew my business up it was amazing um, and that's when I realized that we needed more help at 1320 video I couldn't just rely on my friends here and there and we just all started bringing all these different people together from the Omaha area to help with 1320 video. And rather than just like helping on your time off, I had to start paying people and doing 1090. Well, I didn't do 1099s for a while, I guess. They didn't make enough back then. So, <laughs> but I was actually having to compensate people because I they were taking way too much time from their jobs, taking time off and not making money. So I had to counter it somehow. And that's when I had realized like this is getting serious where we actually have something here. Like, I, there was literally a pool of about 30 or 40 friends that just wanted to come hang out and I started having like official jobs and roles for them where I could pay them uh, for what they're doing, whether it's selling merchandise, shooting photos, shooting video. So right around the same time that I started bringing more and more friends to help with this business that I've has become more of a thing because of social media, uh, my friend Chase built this car called the 3DX Evo. Uh, we nicknamed that because the shop that built it was 3D Motorsports and it was an Evo 10. We built the car, took it to the dyno, and he was just a character. He, like, he shows up, he's like, I'm Chase Lautenbach, I'm here to, to break the record. And he did break the record, so that video went pretty viral. That got a lot of views. And then uh, shortly after that, we took the car out for a lot of people riding in it and their reactions. And we had this idea to have our friend Kyle Stinson, who was editing videos here and there for us at the time, have his mom drive the Evo, because she had driven some fast cars back when she was young. And so we showed up at his house, picked up his mom, and filmed her, first of all, riding in the car, which was, she, she was pretty funny, like just the stuff she was saying was hilarious. And then she asked to drive it, and that's when things got really spicy. And she drove the car, uh, one of the moments she, she's accelerating from the light and gets sideways in second gear. We told her not to floor it until she was in third gear, but she just wanted to have fun anyway. Uh, we got done filming that, and I was so excited. I had to edit, I started editing it that night. Uh, I brought it with me when I was going on a work trip for PayPal. I was in Maryland, and I was training a whole bunch of people out there. I finished editing it in my hotel room that night, uploaded it at like 10 o'clock at night, and then I woke up the next morning, and it was on Good Morning America. <laughs> so that was my first viral video, uh, like really viral video uh, on network TV, and that it was just so much fun to watch the views go up from there. So, so we had a lot of fun with that car. There was a few other viral videos with that. I think it's literally hundred and some million views on our channel of all 3DX Evo stuff. So we had a lot of fun with that car. Um, then fast forwarding, things just kept evolving into bigger and better things. And right around like 2014 or 15 is when I had uh, Cletus start helping with my social media because I wanted to bring things together and like really make all the, the videos on YouTube and the social media on Facebook and our posts on Instagram all work together. So um, I rebranded the website, redeveloped the website, made it all work better together, trying to make it look more like an official company, um, had more merchandise, and I had to bring in more people to help out, um, which was just the continual struggle along the way. It was just figuring out how to staff events, merchandise, shipping stuff. Uh, my my shipping department evolved from my bedroom at my my dorm and my apartment and my friend's house eventually my mom started shipping for me because she was selling stuff on ebay and uh, that eventually took over her house like there was stuff in the living room there's stuff in a bedroom there was a stuff in her office and it was just too much we had to move it to omaha went to a warehouse actually it went to my house my garage for about a year and then finally got our first warehouse but along with that came staffing actual employees to be able to ship and to be able to um, shoot the events and this is when I realized that this is definitely going to turn into more of a business and there is a point where I'm literally working in the car 
taking calls for PayPal with Fortune 500 companies, IT teams, like 12 different people on the, on the call lit, listening to me tell them how to integrate PayPal while we're going to TX2K on Friday, and then on Monday I'd be talking to them on the way back. Um, and I just couldn't do both. I couldn't do PayPal well, and I couldn't do 1320 video well. And there was this point where I had to decide that I needed to leave PayPal. And this was a really tough decision for me because I really liked the job at PayPal. It was a great salary that I could live on by itself. And 1320 video had become a thing that could be successful by itself probably for about a year. So I could be independent with that. So it made it really easy to grow both of them together. But I just couldn't do it. I was nine and a half years in. And if I'd stayed another six months, I would have made a lot more money in stock, but I had to make that decision. Um, and at the same time, uh, my first official employee, Jacob Anderson, who had been editing me for me like part-time here and there for about a year and a half, two years, uh, he was ready to leave his job and go full-time. So uh, before this point, before my final promotion at PayPal, probably a year and a half prior, I had a manager, uh, May, who asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, I want to leave here probably in the next year or two. And I'll never forget this. She said that uh, instead of saying, well, I'm just going to get rid of you now, she said, well, what, what skills do you need for that job to be able to be successful at that that I can teach you here and put you in a position? I said, well, I need to hire people and manage those people. And he said, okay, well, you're going to be a manager in this department. I'm like, uh, I I don't, don't really want to do that, but <laughs> uh, so that, that really set me up for success. So from the point that I left PayPal, this is what really enabled me to make this a business and do some big things. Like we went from my mom shipping my merchandise in her office to it being in a warehouse. We went from selling out of the back of my mom's minivan to having our own minivan and having actually f fast forward another year, we had our 40 foot merch trailer with a big truck going to you know these massive events. Uh, had a merch crew, a full-time media crew, and that was what really, like, I was able to focus just on 1320 video, and that just blew things up. We're going to Australia, we're going to Sweden. Literally a few months after I left PayPal, I went to Sweden for the Stockholm Open, and that was something I couldn't have done when I was working at PayPal. Along with that was the people that made that all work, and they were my friends that had been helping me for years, and some that had really proven themselves to be really good at what they did and were available to move into a full-time job. So I was able, over the next few years, hire Fred, hire Matt, hire Witty. Uh, we got our, our merch team in place. Um, so we had two, ed actually three editors at one point, uh, photographer, three videographers, including myself, and three merch crew. So we've blown up into this big team of people that are doing some big things all over the world. So through hiring all these people over the next few years, it enabled us to become the largest streetcar media group in the world and it's freaking awesome and we're still doing that today so let me introduce you to the 1320 video media crew that made that happen i'm fred white videographer 1320 video and this is how i got my dream job i met kyle back in 2008 on i remember exactly where it was 72nd street i think he was pulling up behind me or i was pulling up behind him one or the other and at the time we both had corvettes he had a c5 uh, fixed roof coupe and i had uh, my red c2 and both cars actually had the same plate with one letter difference. It said not dads on it. His said not dads with an S. Mine says not dad with a Z. And uh, we, I, we both noticed, we pulled up next to each other. He said, do you want to pull over and take pictures? I said, hell yeah. So we pulled over in the elementary school uh, parking lot and we took some pictures and that was, I don't even think I got his number or anything. We just, that, that's how I met Kyle was we were driving our Corvettes down the street and we had like the same plate. I didn't do anything, work at any events or anything like that for Kyle till 2013. And I wasn't even supposed to be doing it. I just did it because I was there. Uh, it was TX2K. All, basically all of my car friends from Omaha were going to TX2K and I really wanted to go. So my buddy Chase said, hey, uh, you can drive my Infinity down and we'll find a place for you on the floor somewhere or whatever. I was like, okay, cool. So I went down to TX2K, just hanging out. I was at the event one day and all the, po all the people that Kyle brought to sell merch just decided they were gonna go watch the dyno or take pictures when they weren't supposed to take pictures, whatever. And I, it was me and another guy that both weren't supposed to be working the booth, behind the booth, selling t-shirts. And uh, Kyle came up at one point, he said, like, you've been selling and stuff all day? I was like, yeah, I don't know where your guys are. He said, well, throw a t-shirt on. So I put a t-shirt on and I sold t-shirts for like the rest of the event. And that was legit the first time I ever did anything for 1320 or anything like that. And then 
uh, the way my schedule worked at my job, uh, my mom was my boss. So uh, I had to get my work done, but I could get like weekends off here and there. And when I had weekends off is when Kyle would like hit me up to see if I could come sell t-shirts or something like that and just help, you know, whatever at the event. And then in 2014 at, I think it was a COTS event. The event was pretty much done. They just had grudge racing left. And Kyle had, uh, now our, our head editor Stinson, said take Fred down to the, down to like mid-track and see what he can do with a camera. And the first time a car launched, they zoomed in instead of out because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But I got that camera in my hand and then uh, I was like, this is fun. And then I remember going street racing like a month or two later, I was given a camera to go street racing. And that was the first time I'd ever done that. And I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. I don't want to sell t-shirts anymore. So that's, that's where, that's where I started doing video stuff for Kyle. And then uh, in 2015, uh, that was the first time I was sent to an event by myself without Kyle. And I freaked out. Like I woke up at six o'clock in the morning with no alarm, anxiety, super high. It was an event I had never even covered before. It was Texas Invitational. I never covered the event. I knew it was a roll racing event. I knew it was like really big shops were there. I had never talked to any of them. I was freaking out. Covered the event pretty well, considering it was my first time. And then from then on, uh, Kyle could go to an event and I could go to an event the same weekend and we could tag team stuff like that. And that's how we did stuff for a couple years. Uh, and then in April 2016 is when uh, I officially didn't need another job. I still I still help out at my mom's business every once in a while, but 2016 is when I signed my papers. So this is what I do full time, and that was really cool to me that I get to do this thing that I've been doing kind of as like a side job hobby, but like really wanted to do it. And April 2016, signed my paperwork, and I got to do this full time, which is awesome. And that was six years ago, six and a half years ago. People ask me all the time, like, how long have you been doing it? It's like, well, I've been going to events for Kyle for like 10 years. Like, do you still have fun doing it? It's like, yeah. It's like, I, I like going to see cool race cars. I like talking to people, meeting people that be, that, that meeting people that build cool shit and they just do it in their garage and nobody else sees it. And we get to highlight that. Getting to tell people's story when they don't really have a platform to do it themselves is pretty, it's like one of the best parts of doing the job is you get to do stuff like that. I'm Matt Verbank and this is the story of how I got my dream job at 1320 Video. I remember finding out or getting my first phone, downloading the YouTube app and watching all the 1320 videos on YouTube back in the day. And I saw the videos of them racing around Omaha where I lived. It's like, oh man, I gotta meet up with these guys. And I got pretty good at recognizing the voices in the videos and one night I was at a bar after work and I heard the laugh, that like Kyle Loftus laugh down the bar. And I was with my buddy, he was not into cars. And I ended up just ditching him after I found out where Kyle was at the bar. And we talked, nothing really became of that. It was just cool to meet him back then. But later that year he had the ice cream cruise event and I went to the ice cream cruise and I actually got to see him. He was at a gas station down the street filling up his ZR1. It's like, oh, do you remember me? Some small talk. And he's like, yeah, we're doing a river float. After this event on Sunday, you should come. Ended up going on the river float, meeting him and all the other 1320 guys and f floated down the river. And he ended up on my buddy's pole behind a boat inner tube. So we were just sitting there chatting. I was like, man, if you ever need somebody to go on these trips with you, I'm the guy, like, I love this stuff. I want to be part of this. And he's like, uh, I have an event coming up in Colorado where I'm going to go film some GTRs on the street. It's like, take me. So called into work. I was sick that day and went out to Colorado and filmed some street racing and just was hooked. Wanted to do more of it. Lived and breathed for street racing after that moment in time. I was taking off quite a bit of time at work. I was working at Walgreens and my manager was actually like, you can't have this much time off of work. I didn't have my job at Walgreens through the, the whole year, if that tells you anything. But Kyle asked me, is this something that you'd want to do full time? I think that was probably 2016. I was like, heck yes, I want to do this full time. So got the job and I remember we were going, we were driving minivans that we rented from Hertz and pulling a U-Haul trailer behind them and just like a little tiny tent but and like rubbermaid containers full of merch like not a lot to a pickup truck 40 foot trailer whole entire like 40 foot long merch booth to 
a warehouse full of merch and here we are man what's up guys i'm scott witty i work for 1320 video as the head photographer do all the gimbal video work and some social media with fred and matt and this is how i got my dream job all right so <laughs> back when i first met kyle i actually thought the bugatti veyron was the very fastest car on the whole planet i thought nothing could be faster or nothing would be faster you know why because the little top speed thing on the brochure said 253 miles an hour or something like that yeah and uh somewhere around there and so i was like all right that was my extent of knowledge on car stuff i did not know what 1320 video was i uh i liked cars from james bond movies and you know from fast and the furious movies like a normal person but as far as my knowledge went it was not there i did not understand you could put a few thousand dollars into a camaro and you're gonna be scooting so anyways my buddy jacob rinky had uh been my little car friend back down in lincoln nebraska where i lived and uh he took me to the ice cream cruise back when it was at the dollar general slash sonic still hadn't even made it to warner park hadn't made it to i-29 or anything and uh we're just you know walking around getting some photos and at the time i thought it was pretty good i was not but i thought it was decent so i'm going around taking pictures after the event's done i get everything figured out photos uploaded kyle hits me up and you know i met kyle at this event he hits me up he's like hey man i really liked you know your passion you had for when you were running around getting pictures and they turned out really good uh, i got a couple of events that are coming up so like, do you want to go and at the time i'm like a junior in high school i think or something like that junior senior in high school so like i obviously have class well he tells me there's going to be lamborghinis and things down as the texas invitational my very first event and so i was like all right i'll skip class like who cares it'll be fine so i skipped class went down to the texas invitational i think we were like in uh we we're in his parents like i think it was the 90s like town and country an old tannish gold van had some stickers in the trunk a couple guys it might have been like maybe Stinson, Jacob, Bartek, and Kyle. And I was like, I saw a Lamborghini, which who, it might have been stock, it might have not been, but I was losing my mind. It was like one of the first couple Lamborghinis I have ever seen. And like I said, I thought the Bugatti was the fastest car ever. So like, I thought the Lamborghini was pretty much the second fastest car. So, I mean, I saw it, I was like, woo. And I was like on the ground taking pictures, just doing all sorts of stuff. and. Then uh, I covered that event and he invited me to another one. It was King of the Streets up in Chicago, which was a totally different world. I went from the exotics that I had known to an actual drag race at Great Lakes Dragway. And that's where I started to see cars that were not exotics. And I was like, what are these? And then I was like, holy moly, they were fast. They were real fast. And uh, that pretty much opened my world up into the drag racing scene. And uh, I guess I was hooked, just like all the other guys that started here and got sucked in. I mean, I was hooked as well. It evolved from, you know, getting a couple bucks at the end of it to something a little more official, maybe a 1099 a few years into it. And then I was, uh, I think I was a year or two after going full time with the company. I really had to prove myself at the time. And I don't know what it was. I guess I don't know if it was the passion I had or photos that I took or I guess who knows. But I ended up getting a full-time position and I've been loving it ever since and now we just travel the world and film race cars and I like to one of my favorite things about working here is being like the uh, Jehovah Witness kind of guy so like no matter where we are we'd be in Walmart the airport on a train like does not matter if I see someone who even looks a little bit like they might like cars I'm like hey you like cars he's like yeah you ever watch YouTube He's like, yeah, I guess sometimes I'm like, you should look up 1320 videos. Like we travel the world and film race cars and you know, it's really fun. And I just go ahead and tell them all about it. <laughs> so I don't know. I have a lot of fun doing what I do and I'm passionate about doing it. So I feel like that we're going to have quite a few more years to go and I'm excited to see where everything goes. So people ask me how I made 1320 videos successful. And as you can see from my story, it wasn't really about any certain point along the way that I did, but it was about 
my passion and my friends passions around me the 1320 video family that's like 60 70 80 people strong not just my employees but all my friends that have been surrounding me for years and pushing me to do what i do uh, and being able to take advantage of opportunities that presented themselves while i was working at paypal while i was not uh, and just making this such a big it really about passion and the people behind it and that's what the 1320 video story is all about I hope you guys enjoyed our first 1320 video story. Make sure to subscribe because we're bringing more of these stories from our racing adventures from across the world.